All right, go ahead and read Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. So we see that according to this passage, he's given some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Okay? And we would disagree with ourselves uh, with this diagram, but we've, we found it to be helpful in understanding catalytic work and different roles. Um, we've got your, your apes and your shepherd teachers. Your apes, uh, they're, they're your pioneers. Okay? So they're, when it comes to the kingdom of God, they're wired to think of where new people, new places. Where's the lostness at? And your shepherd teachers, um, you know, they, and so these people, the apes are thinking of, of expanding into new areas. Um, the shepherd teachers are concerned about depth and the health of the work. And uh, both are equally valuable. They're, they're needed. Um, these are more, uh, uh, I guess I'd say, at, at work, uh, pioneering among lostness. And then once you've got uh, disciples and churches, uh, these are, are driving it down deep and healthy. And, they, and the ideal is when they're working together. Um, if we were to draw a four fields diagram here, Um, your, your apes are going from the empty field of lostness to uh, field two of, of evangelism, the gospel. Your shepherd teachers are going from the empty field of lostness to, to field four, getting to church. But what true uh, healthy uh, movement looks like is actually through field three. <laughs> Discipleship. Um, pouring your life into uh, people. And so we're seeing that it's when we have these two that are working together is where the healthiest uh, movements are taking place among disciples and churches. So uh, this is how we're seeing this play out um, in, in our world as we're going into a, a new city or a new area um, that the apes are really um, excited to get out there, engage lostness, share the gospel. And, uh, and disciple the fruit, and the shepherd teachers are able to really come along and, and help fortify and strengthen, and it's, it's just ideal if they're working together. So go ahead and practice this with your buddy. So uh, as we consider um, these different roles um, within a movement, we're noticing actually three phases of movement. And the, the first phase is what we're going to call multiplication, where we're seeing um, the gospel go out, disciples uh, and groups and churches are multiplying, and uh, the Holy Spirit is leading that work. And then phase two, as we're seeing disciples and churches multiply, uh, we're also, if it's going to be a healthy movement, we need pastors, we need shepherds. And uh, especially as we're pioneering in new areas, we noticed in, in Acts 14 that the elders were found in the harvest. They appointed elders in these new churches. So if that's going to happen in new areas, we're going to need some pastoral development, some pastoral training. We want healthy movements of healthy churches. We need, we need pastors, and they need to be equipped. So the second phase is pastoral development. Well, if you get a a group of, of pastor, new pastors of churches together in an area, we want to help them discover from the scriptures uh, what their doctrine is. We care about doctrine, so doctrinal development is important. Um, so these are the three phases we're seeing now within our four fields training. Well, let me just say this. Which, which of these, as we're considering the apes and the shepherd teachers, you know, which, which of these two you think would be more heavily involved in the multiplication phase? That's right, the apes. But what about the pastoral development? Yeah, crucial to that are the shepherd teachers and doctrinal development. Yeah, crucial to that 
are shepherd teachers. doesn't mean shepherd teachers aren't involved in multiplication. They actually are. And it doesn't mean that apes aren't involved in the pastoral doctrine development. But you can see the, the importance of both in the heart of a movement. I know as we, uh, especially early on in stages of, of movements, a lot of shepherd teachers are like, where do I fit into this? I Hopefully you see, you're very important. Now, as you're talking about our, our training, um, you know, as you consider our training manuals uh, for multiplication, we're, we're using the four fields manual. Uh, for pastoral development, we use the foundations training. And there's others that can be used too. I'm just letting you know what we, we're using. And for the doctoral development is Confessions of the Faith, which is just simply uh, taking your, your typical uh, systematic theology that we'd use and uh, or tenets of the faith. And instead of just saying, here's what you believe, we give them the passages and let them spend a lot of time digging up, what does the Bible say Jesus is? What does the Bible say the Word of God is? And they're seeing all these passages of Scripture and then coming together and settling on a position so that when the false teaching, not if, but when false teaching or others come in, um, this network or coalition of pastors are able to say, no, 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 this is what we believe because this is what the Bible says, not because so-and-so told me, but it's what the Scriptures say. For pastoral development, uh, we're equipping them in, uh, in the foundations. It's hermeneutics, homiletics, how to craft a message, uh, a, a, a Genesis to Revelation study, understanding um, uh, the Scriptures. And, um, and then, of course, the Four Fields uh, manual um, covering the tools and principles for, for multiplication. So these are the three phases of movement and uh, the roles that are key to those three phases.